Hey, my brothers and sisters, I hope this day finds you well. You know, sometimes I find myself getting repetitive. And then I realize that, of course, I'm getting repetitive because their lies are repetitive. Throughout the ages, throughout the decades, their lies are on repeat and they're constantly in their face and they infiltrate entertainment to try to legitimize their lie because they figure with repetition, they can speak something into existence. They infiltrate media so they can repeat their lies. They they infiltrate the schools now so that they can get kids younger, get them acclimated, get them groomed, get them indoctrinated to the lie so that the lie is all that they know. If the lie is all they know, it then can become their reality. Unfortunately, a lie isn't reality. So when reality comes, you know, comes, you know, with the check to the table <laughs> after the meal, everybody's like, what? And then that's where you have the fall of human civilization. And I'm not being hyperbolic. To me, it seems like like all of these things are just to destroy mankind. Like there's nothing that can prosper from this. Nothing on no level, not their climate alarmism and having them killing food and having them uh, initiate all these policies that are just going to, at the end of the day, just destroy everything. It's worse for the environment. It's worse for, for people economically. And then you see what they're doing with, with gender and all this stuff, just confusing. And it's... I mean, what, what is the end game, right? If you think about what's the end game, but they put their lies on repeat. And so I tend to, in order to combat the lie, I'm just gonna, there's only one truth. So I just say that, say that same truth over and over and over and over and over as they try to, you know, remix their lies and, and, and try to reform them and try to like filter in a little bit of the truth, but then, then they spin it and like, no, it doesn't work. I can just keep repeating the truth. And so that's what the segment is. This segment is once again, me bringing something to your attention that is true because they keep trying to distract you from the truth in order for them to reach their own nefarious ends it has nothing to do with you. And if you don't believe me, please just step back and research it yourself. Because if you actually go on a quest for truth, which is the only thing that can protect your mind from their lies, you will discover exactly what I've discovered. It, it'll scare you. But... You hiding in the you hiding underneath the bed or underneath the, the covers from the monster in the room will not get the monster out of your room. You, you can't just turn a blind eye. You can't eventually it will reach your doorstep. And when that happens, you can't go, oh I didn't know. And I, like, well, you didn't want to know. You tried to stay hidden. And we all know what good needs to prosper. I mean what evil needs to prosper, and that's for good people to do absolutely nothing not stand on the principles, not hold the line, not fight back. And the next thing you know, your great grandchildren have barcodes across the back, across the back of their necks, and they're sitting in government facilities eating synthetic meat. <laughs> Cause that's where it's headed. Seriously, over-sexualized and undereducated and extremely violent. Anyway, so the point I wanna make today is, is once again, it's about gun control. Because whenever they say gun control, what they mean is, they're trying to justify disarming you, not themselves, so that they're the only ones with the power to actually enforce their will using violence, using the best tool for violence against us. That's it. When they say gun control, that's what that means. And if you look at it globally, places that have stricter gun, gun control like or don't have guns at all, don't allow them really, you, you still haven't stamped out the evil, the underlying root evil. So then you get mass stabbings and you get people hitting people with cars and you get bombs. People are gonna find ways. They're gonna find ways. And so this is an excellent example. It's a horrible story, horrible tragedy, but it has nothing to do with a gun. And that's my point, that's, that's the lie. That's the lie. So if you didn't know about it, breaking story, there was a mass shooting in Russia a mass shooting in Russia. And it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. If you look at this, 13 dead, 21 wounded in a school shooting in Russia, I believe seven of the fatalities were from children. And then when you go here and you read this article, so I'll include this link in the description section so you can go over this yourself. But the shooting take, took place in a school, and I'm probably going to butcher this name, but it looks like Izhev, 
Izhev, Izhevesk, which is a city 600 miles east of Moscow in the Udmurtia region. Now, a gunman opened fire in a school in central Russia today, and this is Monday, killing 13 people, including seven children and wounding 21 others. Russia's investigative committee said the shooting took place in school number 88 in Izhevsk, a city about 960 kilometers, 600 miles east of Moscow in the Udmurtia region. It identified the school as 14 children and seven adults. It identified the wounded, sorry, it identified the wounded as 14 children and seven adults. The governor of Udmurtia, Alexander Bresh, Breshelov, said in a video statement that the gunman shot himself. Kremlin spokes. Men, Dmitry Peskov described the shooting as a terrorist act and said that President Vladimir Putin has given all the necessary orders to the relevant authorities. President Putin deeply mourns deaths of people and children in the school where a terrorist act took place, Peskov told reporters Monday. The school educates children between ages 1 and 11. It has been ed- evacuated and the area around it has been cordoned off, the governor said. The investigative committee identified the gunman as 34-year-old Art. Artyom Kazantsev, Kazantsev, a graduate of the same school. It said in a statement that Kazantsev wore a black t-shirt bearing Nazi symbols. No details about his motives have been released. So if there's no details about his motives, what, what does it matter you saying that he had Nazi symbols on his shirt? This is why, you know, coming from the Huffington Post being left-leaning, they have to try to add their bias in someplace. And so what, what difference does it make? What difference does it make if he has Nazi symbols on his shirt? He didn't put on the shirt and then become a mass murderer, right? There's a deeper issue here. They never want to talk about the deeper issue. They're already trying to swing this like it's some kind of, you know, Nazi-esque, white supremacist, you know, uh, endeavor or, or terrorist attack where I'm going to show you a video. All the kids look like they're white. I'm sure that he's white. And so what's the spin? What's the Nazi symbol then for? Right. That's the kind of stuff that that bothers me because that's a part of their manipulation. Just report the facts. And I want to know why this 34 year old man would even do this. And then here's here's what's even more interesting. Check this out. The Russia's National Guard said Kazantsev used two non-lethal handguns adapted to fire real bullets. So who adapted them? Did he? Because I'm going to go over the gun control laws in, in Russia in a second. But you see what I'm saying? None of your gun control laws are going to work. They can, if a person wants to kill people, they're going to figure it out. They're going to figure it out. What, what is apparent is that nobody at this school was able to defend themselves against somebody with a firearm, modified or otherwise. A criminal probe into the incident has been launched on charges of multiple murder and illegal possession of firearms. He shot himself. I mean, is he still alive? What are you talking about? A, a, a criminal investigation. I, I just, these things are, it's, it's, this is what happens when, when you deny the truth. This is what happens. You, you, you get blindsided by reality. You get blindsided. So let's, let's go over some of the gun control laws in Russia that didn't prevent this at all because it doesn't address the issue. The issue is never the gun, that's the truth. The lie is that it's the gun. If we remove the guns, then, then people, then criminals won't be able to do these things. Or people that, that don't have a criminal record and go through all the checks and balances and everything and still, get, still acquire firearms, they won't do it if they don't have access. No, what they'll do is they'll acquire them illegally and still, and still carry out these murders because that's what they want to do. We have to get to the root of it. Or they'll use something else like their car or they'll build bombs or they'll do, they'll do something. If they want to take lives, they're going to because they're sick. And because you can't protect people, you can't protect them. You can't. You're not omnipotent. You can't be everywhere instantaneously. If somebody is able to get to a phone to call for help, that's a lot. That's a lot. They have to get to the phone during this, which is going to be a surprise. Nobody expects to get attacked. They'd have to get to the phone to call for help. And then they have to wait for help to arrive. All of that's happening. You have this monster who's armed, <laughs> legally or otherwise, doesn't matter, who has all of that time to wreak havoc. That is the truth. I don't know why you guys don't see that that is just the truth. 
That's just the truth. So the best line of defense is going to be the people who are already on the ground, who are, who are the ones getting attacked. That's the best line of defense. And if and the best tool, the best tool for violence is a firearm, that means the best tool for self-defense is also a firearm. That is just the truth. You guys get denied. You guys can keep voting away your ability and, and trying to vote away my ability to protect my family. At the end of the day, you're going to catch a bullet and you're going to die wondering, huh, maybe, maybe I shouldn't have voted that way. Then maybe I would have had a chance to defend my family instead of me begging and cowering, begging them not to hurt my family. If somebody's already shown up with a gun, no amount of begging is going to do anything. It'll probably, it'll probably excite them more because they're sick and they're monstrous. But here, check this out. So this is coming from USA Carry. This was uh, updated on December 29th, 2021. And this is just on, on gun laws in Russia. So read a few of these bullet points. Or actually, I can read them all. Did you know in Russia at this time, there's only one federal law regulating firearms and no state laws. You cannot own a short-barreled handgun for self-defense. Applying for a gun license requires a psychiatric evaluation. Russian mass gatherings, protests, and public events at educational institutions prohibit firearms. You can only own up to 10 licensed firearms with a purchase license. The license is valid for five years other than ones that fire rubber bullets. Local police must visit gun owners' residences at least once a year to verify the safe storage of guns. For initial and renewal licenses, applicants must attend a six and a half hour training class. The Russian government offers the class and applicants must pass written tests. Federal law prohibits using a firearm against women. So I want you to keep in mind, all of that updated as of December of 2021, all of that and none of it, none of it stopped this person from taking the lives of adults and children and injuring others modifying non-lethal weapons to then shoot bullets. Didn't do anything. None of those measures did anything at all. So what are they gonna do now? They, what's gonna be the next step? You have all of that already in place. What else do you have? You psychiatric, you visit folks' homes, you do all this stuff, right? It's not even at the state level, it's at the federal level. That would, so what are you gonna do now? You have to get to the root cause. You have to get to the root cause. Okay, because if you don't, what you're going to get is it's already escalating. It's going to continue to escalate because your laws don't stop people. They don't stop crazy people. They're crazy. <laughs> they definitely laws definitely don't stop criminals. By definition, criminals don't follow the law. I want you to tell me if all of those bullet points and all the laws that we have in California and in Illinois and in New York and, and all throughout our country, they haven't done anything. And my point is other countries are facing the same issues and see what you get. What you end up getting is this. How terrifying is that? How terrifying is that? As a parent, how terrifying is that? You hear that something like that is going on at a school where your children are at. What's the first thing that pops in your head? Are your children safe? And I'm here to tell you that they're not, they're not safe. And these gun laws aren't doing anything to keep them safe. So stop voting for them. Stop, stop voting to have people left defenseless. Stop voting to, ha to have your children left defenseless. Stop voting to have the people that you entrust to care for your children and educate them. Stop voting to have them left defenseless. Because when the monster's at the gate, no amount of pleading and begging is going to, is going to save anyone. And that's the truth. They want you in the dark, though.
They want you defenseless in the dark. I'm over here trying to help you determine the light. That's it. You guys be well.